so what we want to do today is we want to work on the rest of the selective and differential media type tests and so those are your labs 19 through uh, 38 and we're going to do about half of them first as we run through them and so let me kind of give you an idea of what we want to do so for labs 20 and 21 they usually kind of go hand in hand we're preparing regular plates so i'm going to be using my gloves so i can show you in which the actual content within the auger has been enriched for example, for lab 20, the one that says casein hydrolysis, we actually added casein into it. What do I mean by that? We added actually milk. We've prepared a plate that contains milk within the auger. And then we're actually going to inoculate it, just as we've done before, with a particular organism. So, in particular, these type of plates usually look a little bit kind of on the uh, cloudier side. And then after they've been incubated for about 24 to 48 hours, we can see what happens to the actual environment. For lab 21, what we're doing, similar case, but instead of adding milk, we're adding starch, specifically amylose, which is a version of it. And so for those two sets, we will inoculate them with two sets of organisms. And so what we will do usually add E. coli and Bacillus megatarium, inoculate them, let them sit there for a couple of days, and then test to see what has happened to the media. The idea here is to see if these organisms produce a particular exoenzyme. In other words, a protein, an enzyme that gets secreted outside of the cell and see what happens with that environment. For example, if an organism possesses the exoenzyme caseinase, that means that it can actually process casein. And so since there's casein in the milk, we'll actually be able to see that visually on the plate. Same thing applies to the amylose plate, the starch plate. If the organism possesses the enzyme amylase, and it secretes it, it produces outside of the cell, it should be able to use the starch on the plate too. However, that one requires a little bit of intervention, and so to that you have to add a little bit of iodine to the actual medium to see what actually happens. So we're gonna look at those two plates and we'll show you close-ups of what those look like. So here we have two plates that contain starch in their plates, so these are the amylose plates or starch plates, and we've already inoculated them with E. coli and Bacillus megatarium. And here we have our milk plates look a little cloudy, like I said before. And so we've also inoculated them with Bacillus megatarium and E. coli. So the idea here is to see what has happened to the medium. And so in a moment, you will be able to see up close what those plates look like, and you'll be able to determine if that organism possesses that enzyme, that exoenzyme, and if it possesses the ability to utilize that particular um, food present, like milk, starch, for it to be able to survive. So that is the point of labs 20 and 21, the casing hydrolysis test, as well as the starch hydrolysis test. For laboratory 20, we're gonna introduce medium that is referred to as a milk auger plate that is enriched with milk. The idea is it possesses a protein called casein that can be used as a source of energy. When we inoculate plates, what we're looking for is if an organism has the ability to produce an enzyme called caseinase, and this caseinase should be able to be exported outside the cell, it becomes extracellular, and if it can, it will break down the milk that is present in the auger, producing usually a zone of clearance. So if it doesn't, the milk present in the auger, in this case, the casein, remains nice and solid and opaque. And in certain cases, when it does, it will produce a zone of clearance. Your job is to determine how this is done. So in lab 21, what we want to do is utilize a plate that has now been enriched using amylose or starch. Here we will inoculate these guys and see if the organism can now utilize the starch that is present there. However, starch happens to be relatively translucent and it's very difficult to observe. So what we do is take these plates and then add a little bit of iodine. And our iodine can now tell us when starch is present starch that is still remaining on the plate will turn dark or reasonably between a brown to black color. If starch has been consumed, it'll remain nice and clear. So what we will do is take our plates, open them, and add a small amount of iodine and let it sit for a few seconds. So, the iodine and then we can kind of move it around a little bit so it can cover the entire surface we may need to add a little bit more in a little while
and then we give it a little bit of time to react. After some time passes, we want to look for a zone of clearance of what originally used to be the inoculation. So here we have a couple of other plates that have been inoculated in the same way. So now what we want to look for is around the actual area of the organism to see if there's a zone of clearance. So we're going to let it sit there for a little bit longer. And then what we'll look for is whether or not these plates have changed. So we'll actually stop the video for a moment, we'll pause it, and then we'll actually let you see it in a few minutes. Continuing with lab 21, we've had a lot, a little bit of time to pass. And so what we're gonna be looking for is the absence of, in this case, amylose or starch. And the way we look at this is by actually looking at it from the bottom or from a distance. And we're looking for a zone of clearance that is present in some cell growth, in this case, the colonies, and some that are not. As we look up a little bit closer, we can see this kind of lighter color around the rim of the colony versus cells that don't. Sometimes it makes it a little bit easier when we compare these by using a lighter contrast. So we have some paper and we can actually press in these here and see this a little bit more clearer. So organisms that possess amylase can create this zone of clearance and those that don't keep it nice and solid with all the amylose and starch present on the outside. This can actually be observed also as long as there's not a lot of media or iodine present from the other side. 